Today I'm going to be demonstrating this umbrella cockatoo that I did on Canton mixed media paper with colored pencils. A secret secret Hi, I'm Tanya with Imagination Arts, and today I'm going to be doing this umbrella cockatoo that which I did on Canton mixed media paper with color pencils from Walmart, as well as brush and pencil touch up and brush and pencil titanium white from brush and pencil. I will have links below the video in the description of all the products I used in this in this video. So let's go. A secret Okay, first off, off, before we get started, I want to just mention, as you can see in this video up at the top, I've already done quite a bit of the uh, background to save time, and then I proceeded to move on down into the bottom half. Up in the top half, I used light greens, dark greens, some light browns, some dark browns, and uh, my, of course my black to help go in and put in some shading. Then down in the bottom, I went over it again with the same ones, the same colors I used at the top. I've got my light green. I put several layers down and then blended that and then went back over it again with the light green again to make sure that I had enough saturation, enough pigment on the paper. Tried to make sure I had all of the paper covered where there was no uh, paper showing. And then I switched over, uh, blended that out, moved on to the next section and then uh, put light green down went over and then blended it moved on to the next section and as you could see just there I went in and um, got had with my dark green put some shading under the bottom of the tree branch that the bird is sitting on and then I went back and uh, picked up my brush and went in and blended the dark green in and then went in and put some of uh, the dark green down in the bottom to give it a little more depth a little more color make it look more into the background and then I picked up my brush again and with, with my odorless paint thinner and uh, dabbed it off on a napkin to make sure I had the excess off and then proceeded to blend in the dark green into the lighter green, um, blending it all together. Then I picked up my dark green pencil again and went in and put in some more darker areas at the bottom. Again, trying to make this have the uh, out of focus look or the blurry look because we want the bird to be the main focus of the picture so and just making the background look blurry then I went in here again putting got my dark green going in putting some more dark green down um, putting a lots lots of shading dark green underneath the bottom of the tree putting it I put a little bit of it on the branch as you can see there because the the there was a little bit of green in the branch of the tree and just basically going along the bottom of the tree putting more dark green in making that as dark as I want because naturally the parts that are going to be behind them are going to be darker because they're going to be blocked by the light so just making sure I'm getting a lot of dark um, darker green in here in different areas just to make it look like it's you know not all one color there are actually different colors of leaves in there that there's some leaves with shading on them there's some leaves um, that are different kinds of leaves basically just trying to uh, get lots of different color saturation in here you don't want to do all one solid color or it's going to be flat you want to have lots of colors in your picture and in, in, in your image so that way it looks it looks more has more depth and has more feel to it, it has more texture more uh, as I said again depth to the picture because if you just do one flat color, it's not going to look very good. It's going to be very bland, very flat. And you want to make sure, again, that you do have a lot of layers. Like I said, I was constantly looking at a reference photo that I used from Pixabay. And I will place a link to that to that uh, image in the, the video description below where you can go out there and get that. Also, um, I will also have links to all of the other materials that I'm using in this. And again, all of the supplies that I'm using in this video are all supplies, um, inexpensive art uh, supplies that I purchased at Walmart because, um, I'm like I said in my uh, first couple of videos, I'm just getting started ba um, back into my art again and I can't, couldn't really afford to get expensive 
materials right away. But these, I've been happy with the, the some of the work that I've been done. That I mean, I could, I'd be happier if that if with better. But I've been happy with some of the stuff that I've done with these materials. They've been very good for me to just get started again. And um, I'm using Canson mixed media paper here um, from one of their pads. Um, just pulled it out and taped it onto a board that I have kind of leaning up against something in um, in front of me. And right here, looking at my reference photo, photo again, going back and looking, um, putting more greens in. Right now, I'm just blending this all together now that I've got dark green in. I've got my brush and some Odell's paint thinner. I'm just kind of going in there and, and blend it all. And then I went back in with my dark green again and kind of went back over some areas where it needed to be darkened up some more and just kind of blending it all together right here as you can see with my my brush and my Otis paint thinner I'm just blending these all together trying to blend out you want to blend it till um, you can barely see the pencil strokes in here and again, when you're doing um, these backgrounds, you can be kind of messy with these backgrounds if you want to. But I do recommend, even if you're going to uh, be kind of messy with the backgrounds, that you do want to continue to do the backgrounds in small ovals or um, large ovals. Because with ovals, you don't have the stop and start motion as if, if you were going back and forth or side to side where you'll have stop and start um Part places on your picture from where your pencil stopped and started again. And then right here, um, you can see I'm now moving um, onto the top of the tree. It's in the foreground in the background there behind the bird. Just kind of picked up my black uh, dollar pencil from the smaller set that I purchased. I went in and put in some details in the tree with the dark black to give it some uh, texture some back some image some detailing there some shadowing and then after i got those in at the top then i proceeded to just kind of move down to the bottom check it checked my reference photo looked to see where the shadows on the bottom of the tree branch that the bird is sitting on were at and then just kind of went in and started putting that in and again, constantly, you always want to have a reference photo to always work from because having a reference photo is very critical because you can zoom in, you can look at those fine details that you might miss if you were just looking at something. And a lot of times you may think, oh, well, I know how something looks and then try to draw it in there. But if you, but then it'll, um, when you try to draw something because you think of how it looks, then you miss a lot of those fine details that you would miss if you didn't have a reference photo as well as they don't tend to when you're just trying to draw something in there that don't look that you don't have a reference photo to to guide you to give you um, information and to help you see what what stuff you normally would not see you will tend your your image your picture will tend to look a little fake and a little off and so you always want to have a reference photo to go by. Constantly refer to that reference photo. Constantly check where your shadows need to be, where your lights need to be. And now here you can see I've, um, right here I've picked up my light brown and I'm going over to the top of the tree. And um, in this video, you know, everyone, well, our natural instincts are to go to brown with the tree, but if you really look at a tree in real life and look at photos of a tree, they're not all brown. They have a lot of gray, a lot of uh, greens in them. And um, if you look at bark, the outside of the tree, the bark on the outside, a lot of times it's going to be a more of a gray color than it is a brown color. And that's just because of the way the tree is. And then here I blend it. I'm going to, I've got part of it colored in with my light brown now. And now I'm going to go in with my, my brush and my Odalis paint thinner and blend all of that out. Make sure I've got the edges around the bird nice and smooth. Again, blending that all in really good, getting those pencil strokes out. And like I said, with the dark black there, I was trying to give it some 
some texture, some um, detailing. The lines, there, you know, to show where there's knots in the tree or where the bark is separating or if there's a split in the tree or maybe where a piece of bark is, is coming off or whatever. And also in this, in this, uh, in the reference photo, I, uh, I continued to look at it and check it as I was working on the tree in the background. I noticed that there was a lot of green on this tree. There was a lot of moss on it. So in this tree, there's going to be a lot of green in, in on this tree and in this tree because there was moss on it. So if you look at your reference photos, you always, like I said again, you always need to have that reference photo for for guidance for to make your pictures look more realistic. So in, in the greens, you just put the green in there and then it... Um, you always want to make it look as close as possible. And if it's not exact, it's not going to matter. No one's going to know uh, that you didn't have the exact coloring or you don't have a, a knot in the tree where there was one in the photo or not. You just want to make it look as close as possible. And so in that part, then you know, I've got my, all my light browns down and a little bit of green there. And now I'm just kind of blending it in with my old little paint thinner and my brush. Now I'm switching over, looking at my reference photo, checking it, seeing what I need to do. And now I see I need to I needed to switch over to my dark brown and come in and put some more shading in in those areas where there's, you know, suppose there's knots in the tree or where there's a split in the wood where the brown is actually showing through the uh, bark of the tree and through the green. Just kind of putting some of that in there, making it darkening it up, putting lots of, trying to make it look as close to the uh, reference photo as possible. Trying to get all the places in there where there's areas where the brown is really showing through, and then I get all of this done, get this down in there. So, sorry about that place there where I can kind of getting in the way. Hopefully you can still see what I'm doing there. need to adjust that camera a little bit. Um, but as you can see here, I'm just kind of going in and darkening up. And when you're doing working with color pencil, you don't want to put a lot of pressure. You want to just work real lightly because if you apply too much pressure, you'll press down the paper and flatten it out and it'll make it harder for you to get more layers in on there and it'll take more color. Again, blending that some more, then uh, just blending that all in good with my Otis paint thinner and my blending brush. And then I'm going back in, and then I'll put that down, and I'll go back in with my browns again, uh, some greens, and blend those all together. And as you can see here, I saw in the picture that there was a big, huge spot of moss right next to the bird on the tree. So I picked up my mossy green and kind of went in and laid in that patch of moss that's next to the bird on the tree and then went up to the top of the tree and put some moss in up there as well. Just being in that real mossy color because, like I said, there was a lot of moss on the bird in the, um, on the tree in this in the reference photo, so I wanted to make sure I got the, that moss on that tree. Okay, and now as you can see here in this part of the video, I've picked up my light brown again that I used in the top in the tree behind the bird and just going over the branch that the bird is sitting on in the areas where the light brown or the the brownness of the branch is showing through and just kind of working in the, the small ovals there kind of blending it into the shading on the bottom and just using a lot of really small circles with the, my light brown here trying to make sure that I'm covering all of the 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 area trying to make sure I'm getting a lot of pigment on the paper and basically just taking my time here kind of working around the edge of the bird trying to make sure I'm blending all of this in to get getting this blended in together you don't want to have two cut you don't want to have 
areas where you have two colors where you can tell there's a separation there you want it to kind of all blend together so that it lo looks like one solid object and again just kind of just keep continuing to layer the colors going back over and putting more uh, light brown down in the areas where it looks like there's there's areas where I'm getting and now I'm moving over to the other side of the foot getting that area it filled in again working in small circles not applying a lot of pressure again you want always want to work very lightly you want to keep it as light as possible so that way you don't brandish the paper and flatten it out and, um, to where you can get lots of layers on there because once you get get the paper to where it's flat and it no longer has any texture then it will start to it not want to take take any more color which makes it harder to get more depth and more color and detail into the picture so again you want to start off really light and then you know just continue to apply layer after layer in areas where you need it to darker you can and then you can also go in with a darker color and again even with the darker color you you don't have to brandish it really hard or apply lots of pressure you just need to just do several layers until you get it the darkness that you need it to be again adding some of the light brown into the shaded area to make sure it should should be showing through we don't want it like again we don't want this to look like it's just an area that's been uh, filled in we want it to all blend in together so we want to mix those colors in together and again just putting some of that light brown into the shaded area so that it all looks like it's part of one object you don't want to look want it to look like it's several different sections of of a of, of an object that's been divided up you want it to all blend together you want it to look smooth and then so you want all of those to blend in really nice together you can hear just kind of going in working in the small circles putting some of that light brown down and in into, into the shading going across the bottom of the the branch where the shading is putting some of that brown into there so that it looks like it's all one piece again you just want to continue to put layers it's all about layers and shadows and light you just want to make sure that you have your shadows as dark as they're supposed to be continually referring back to your reference photo and looking to see where you need shadows if you need darken them if you if you need light where you need light to show through or maybe to lighten something up and again you always want to start off light because you can always go darker but once you're once you've got a dark a dark um, down it's hard to go back to light and with with any picture that you're doing you um you always want to start off light because with especially with something that's going to be white and again here you can see I'm getting some of my odorless paint thinner that I keep in a container and filling it back up putting some more of my odorless paint thinner into my little container that I keep it in and I use just a little Tupperware bowl that has a lid on it that seals tightly so that way it keeps it from evaporating you always want to make sure that whatever you're keeping it in that it don't leak and also that uh, you keep the lid tight because if there's any, if if you leave it open or don't seal it good, it will evaporate. So again, going in with my odorless paint thinner, blending that branch in good, blending all my shadows and my browns in there. And blending the areas with the, the elderless paint thinner underneath on the other side of the branch just blending that all in nice and good so you, you always want to and again you don't have to have really expensive stuff like again all the materials that I'm using I bought from Walmart no they're not Karen Dosh's and no they're not Faber Castells which I hope to have some I did receive samples from them recently of some of their pens with my brush and pencils uh, titanium white and 
a colored pencil titanium uh, touch up uh, and as you can see here now I'm just kind of I've got my uh, moss green pencil going back in and putting in some more of that mossy on color onto the tree where in the areas where I saw moss in my reference photo and again you always want to use that reference photo can continually look at your re reference photo stop take time back up look at your picture and look and see where you need stuff at because a lot of times when you when you're working with a piece you'll get started on and you'll get going and you're like you're thinking in your mind because I know this goes through my head oh this is going to take so long and so you just want to continue you want to you tend to want to just keep working on the piece and but you have to kind of if you've got that reference photo over there for you to look at it tends to remind you look to look at to stop and take time look at the photo see what's uh what's there that you're missing what you might need to change where you need to put in and see here again i'm looking i stopped to take a look at my reference photo and look at it and now I'm just kind of taking time to look at my picture, look at the image, look at it, and see where I need to come back in and put some more of the moss where it was showing through. Bring back in some of the detailing in there. And then I went in and I just blended that in with my oldest paint thinner and my brush and then went in and put some more of the moss green in around where I saw darkened it up, darkened it, putting some more layers on there to darken up the moss to where it really shows through. And here is, as you can see, now that I've got some of the moss down, I'm taking my brush and just blending it all again. Because you want to make it all look like it's smooth and it's actually part of the image. You don't want it to look like just something that's just put down on the paper to, to add to add to the image or to add coloring. And just continuing to blend that in really good. Trying the main main thing you want to do is you want to just continue to keep blending it until it looks the way you want it to look. Um, trying to blend out all those pencil strokes. And again when you're working in ovals you don't have the certain stops that you do when you're working up and down or um, vertically um, and you don't have the stop and start marks but you will you will have pencil marks from the ovals so with, by blending this out with the odorless paint thinner and a brush it takes out some of those by blending it and making it smooth and where you don't see it uh, see them quite as much it makes it look more much more like a photo or an image than of a, a painting or whatever or a drawing so just going back in there with my gray putting in some adding some of that gray bark color to the image putting some of that gray in there trying to get it the gray to show up as much as possible this is where I made one of the mistakes on this image is I should have put the gray down first before going in and putting in the uh, uh, the gray of the bark before going in and putting down the brown. So having here I was having to put several layers of that gray down just to get it to show up. So again, yes, like I said, you can put color pencils can sometimes uh, be forgiving if you do make a mistake you can go back and fix it it's just a matter of putting multiple layers down over the areas where you need to correct something so if you do make a mistake don't freak out and get upset over it colored pencils are pretty forgiving they're very easy to fix mistakes it's like I said it's just a matter of going back over the area that needs to be corrected and putting some more layers down on there to to get to get it the way it should be here going back up over the edges and the areas where there's knots and some like creases in the tree putting some more deep bringing those back out and Again, moving down to the bottom, trying to bring back in some of that gray in the bottom of the tree, 
trying to get those details pulled back through because as you can see once you've blended it sometimes it will kind of cover those up so you will need to kind of bring them back out again adding some of that gray, more gray above the bird blending it all together and then putting in some more gray As you see here I've, now I'm going back now that I've got some of that gray in there I'm going in and going to blend that with my odorless paint thinner and my brush to make it smooth get some of those pencil strokes out of there and just and with any piece it's all about layering it's all about just stepping back taking a look at your picture looking at it you know, just stepping back at it and looking at it and you'll see things that you won't see when you're working on the piece and you can go back and look at your reference photo and see where you need to add or take away from things sometimes you need to take away from something and right here I'm just kind of going in with my black pencil and adding the shading around the top of the tree putting in and filling in the shading and then the, the knot that was in the tr tree branch where he's in to using my black here to kind of put in some details in the branch putting in some of those textured lines those veins or those branch marks that you see in the trees And put in some more veins on the other side of the tree branch that he's sitting on putting those veins in giving the texture making it look like it's real a really a tree not just um, a streak of color across there you you know it's just like I said it's a matter of just layering over it putting going in there and getting those details in and you don't have to again worry about color you just make sure your darks are dark your lights are light continuing to check your reference photo going back and looking seeing where you need to darken things up seeing where your light your lights need to be at making sure that you get plenty of layers on there before blending it out I usually do at least three or four layers before I blend and then I'll go back and do three or four more layers and then blend it some more and because you just want to make sure that you have lots of pigment on there to get that that paper covered so that none of that white of the paper is showing through you only want the white of the paper showing through when it's something like a white bird like it with this cockatoo that you need the white to show through Again, I was just using my uh, Karen Doss Luminous White pencil there to go in and put some uh, texture and some white, some white veins into the tree, shade, shading under the, the veins there to make so that they don't just look like lines drawn on the paper, that they actually look like they're supposed to be part of the tree. <coughs> now I'm just kind of putting in some of the marks. Um, looked at my reference photo and saw that there was there were places on the tree branch from where the bird had set before where its claws had dug into the tree branch going in with my kind of my yellowish brown there putting some more detailing in around that that knot in the tree because it's supposed to be it's supposed to look raised going in and adding some more of the the yellowish browns where portions of the tree are supposed are exposed from pieces of it coming off or from the bird digging into it Stepping back to take a look and seeing what I need to do. Coming back in with my blending brush and blending it all. Blending that all in. 
Again, you want it to all blend in because you want the bird, we want the bird to be the main focus. So we want everybody, you want their eye to be drawn to the bird. Okay, now you can see here as I'm going back after I've gotten some of the stuff on the bottom, I'm just going back up to the top of the tree and doing some more detailing work up there, putting in some more shading, some more of the, the green the, uh, around the areas where it needed to have more green. Using my gray to go back in and put in some more of the bark. Just putting in, just trying to go back in and put more of that gray tone in there to give it more of a bark look. Because, as I said before, if you look at the reference photos and you look at trees, bark isn't brown, it's more of a gray with some black tones to it. So, we just kind of went in there, and now I'm just going to go back in there and blend that in again after adding some more detailing work and putting in some more of that gray for the bark. Just going on down to, to the bottom of it, just trying to make sure I'm getting that all blended in good. And then also, you know, making it look smooth, trying to make it look like it's all actually one object and that, it, um, that it's all really there. You want to make it look smooth and transitioned and like it's actually part of the tree so that it's, you know, doesn't look like a bunch of colored, uh, colored pencil, like a colored pencil drawing. Now I'm going back in at the bottom on the, the branch at the bottom with my darks, get my dark black, trying to bring back in some of those details going back over those, bringing those back out, darkening them up, bringing those back out, and again, just trying to darken up the areas that need to be darkened more, and again, like I said, it's all about layers, putting layer over layer over layer until you get it looking the way it should. Trying to bring in some definition to the bottom of the tree there. Again, bringing in those highlights, bringing in those veins, those lines in the trunk of the tree. I'm fixing the, the little knot on the tree branch there. Coming in with my brush again and my odorless paint thinner, blending that all out. Because again, we want that to look smooth. We want it to look like it's actually part of the tree and not just some lines drawn onto a piece of paper. Again, going back in again with my dark browns, darkening up some more areas where I looked back at my reference photo, yep, photo and saw some areas where the brown was showing through more. Trying to bring those areas back, bring those areas back out. Get those browns really showing through through the green. 
darkening up the bottom of the tree trunk going over those veins now with my dark brown darkening up those areas again it's all about layers you don't and it's all about using lots of color you don't want to go with just one color on anything that you're doing because nothing if you look at things really closely you'll see there's there's not just one or two colors in something it's got lots of color in it and so you want to just make sure that you get a lot of those colors in there and make it look more realistic again here now I've got my black and now I'm going down to the bottom of the pic the picture down in for the the bottom of the the background putting some of my shading in there getting the shading under the tree putting in some shades for the shadows of the leaves again working in circular motion and just not covering the whole page just kind of going in different areas you want some you want air, the green to show through in some areas here now I'm moving over to another area of the page of the another section of the picture and as I seen as I'm working on the bottom I realized that I did not carry the tree in the foreground down so I'm just going to bring that on down I'm just kind of draw that in there and and this just this this just is just another one of those things that I was talking about earlier about color pencils are very forgiving that if you if you make a mistake somewhere or you forget something or you need to go back and add or uh, add something color pencils are really good for doing they're very forgiving you can always go in and draw something back in that you may have forgot or add add more color somewhere where you need more color you just want to make sure that you always go with the light colors first so that way you get because if you go with the dark colors first then it's going to it's going to be a lot harder to go in and fix things because then once you've got that dark color in there it's hard for you to get to get to to lighten it up again so you always want to go very lightly with every layer that you do so that way you can continue to fix areas that you need to work on and right there just blending that out with my brush my odorless paint thinner and then going back in and adding some more getting some more of paint thinner on my brush blending it and now I've switched back over to my light brown going back to the bottom of the tree trunk adding the brown in there putting some of that brown into the bottom of the trunk looking over looked at my reference photo again and looking where the browns on the bottom are showing through Again, going back in with the light brown, just trying to bring that light brown in on the bottom to where it sh showed the the brown through on the bottom of the trunk. Blended it and then went back in with some more brown. Like again, it's just it's all with color pencils. It's all about with basically any medium. It's all about learning where this with color pencils, acrylics, oils, whatever. It's all layers and the more layers the more detail the more realistic and the better your picture will be again just going in here trying to get that shading in there blended it blending it now with my brush blending that all together going back over to the area where i put some shading i'm going to blend that now I'm going to go in here over here on the other side of the tree with my black again putting in that shading putting some shaded parts for the parts of leaves
Again, working in the circular motions and not covering the whole area. You just want, because your whole image isn't going to be all dark and have all shades. You're going to have areas where the light is hitting leaves, and so you're going to want those areas to show through. Again, going back over to the area that I just blended and bringing some more of that shading in, darkening up some areas. Then moving on over to the rest of the picture and putting some in there. Look, just adding a lot of shading in here. Because again, this is the bottom of the the bottom of the image and this is where things are gonna be a lot darker because they're out of the light and they're also gonna be a lot more out of focus because they're further into the foreground of the image. So then I've got that shading in and then I'm going to go in with my brush and my odorless paint thinner again and blend that all together and just blend it until those strokes, until I see that those strokes are blending into the picture to where it doesn't look like I just drew a bunch of stuff onto the page where it's like it's all blending together, where the strokes are not showing through to where it looks more like a picture or a, a painting. And just continuing to blend those in, trying to make sure I get all of the strokes as much as possible blended out to where it all looks smooth as that out of focus look. Stopping to take a minute to take a look at my picture and look at the photo, see what I need to add, what I need to change. Going in with my dark brown now on the bottom of the tree trunk and defining the edges of that tree. Coming in and putting some more shading in for the bottom of the trunk and putting in the, the areas where the shade needs to be at the bottom. Of course, the bottom is going to be darker than the top because it's going to be below the light. Also darkening up those areas where there's texture and there's veins in the bottom of the tree. And again, when you're working with the tree and when anything you're working with, you always want to look at a reference photo and make sure that you're drawing the, in the direction of the, the image. So if there's if the tree bark is going downward, then you're not going to want to use circular motions because you're going to want to have those lines in there, that those streaks for the bark. And with like fur and with feathers or hair, you always want to look at it and look at it as a pattern or a shape, not just as a clump of hair. And you want to look at it and look at what direction it, it, that it's going in. You want to draw it in that in that the direction. Again, here going in with my black and trying to redefine the ed define those edges of that tree trunk some more bringing in some more of that shadow and some of those veins in the bottom of the tree. And just putting in those veins and some of those the texture of those of the bark. Again, you want to continually look at your reference photo and look at those veins and those those bark lines in the tree and see what direction they're going because you always want to copy those. You want those to go in the direction that they're going in the photo so that it looks more realistic. You don't want to look like you just scribbled a bunch of lines or drew a bunch of patterns onto the tree because then it won't look like a real tree. You want to always make sure that you're patterns in your tree in your tree or your branch or whatever you're drawing that like again you want it to go in the same picture in the same direction that it is in the image that you're using for your reference. 
again going in with my brush and blending that with my odorless paint thinner blending that out trying to get those strokes out make it blend all together so that it looks like it's all one piece so that it doesn't look like I drew that this was drawn you want to make it look like it's like it's an actual image again now I'm going back in with my brown again putting in some more shading around the edges of the tree with my black bringing in some more of that darkening up the areas under the tree branch going back over to the other side and doing the same putting in some more of that shading bringing in some more of that darkness darkening up the areas that need to be darkened like under the branch there and continue you want to continue to refer to that reference photo I can't stress enough how important having a reference photo is because it's so nice to be able to pull that reference photo up look at it and if, you, if there's areas that you're not sure of you can zoom in on it and see all that fine detail which will help you to get your picture much more detailed. Again, going in with my brush and my odorless paint thinner blending that all in again, getting those brush strokes, those pencil strokes out of there. Now when you're blending stuff, you will have some brush strokes from the blending, but you won't, uh, you want that to where that makes it more look more like a painting or, a, or an image instead of just a drawing on a piece of paper. And blending that in some more over there on the other side of the tree stump. Blend, continue to blend that until it looks the way that I want it to look. And that's the main thing. You want to just keep layering and blending until it looks the way you want it to look. I'm going back in with my brown trying to bring in some more of that dark brown into the bottom of the tree put in some of that moss green on the bottom like carrying it down from the top look again matching it to the reference photo continually looking at that reference photo and seeing where that moss green color is at bringing it down into the bottom of the tree Looking at my reference photo, going back and adding more where it needs and blending that. Again, going back up with some more, blending it again. Looking at my photo, checking it with the reference photo to see what I need to. Okay, and here I'm beginning to start working on the bird now, going in and putting some shading around the foot, getting the darks in there, making sure that the shadow under the foot is good, bring, darkening up the shading underneath the bird where he's sitting on the branch and under the, the, the wing. Just trying to darken up some of these areas, again looking at checking my reference photo and looking where it has the darks and the shades and making sure I'm getting those in where they're supposed to be.
checking my reference photo, seeing how far down the shadow comes down onto the branches of the bird. Around the foot. Doing some more of the shading on the other side of the foot now. Getting those areas nice and dark. Checking my reference photo to see, seeing how dark those areas are. Bringing those in, darkening those up. Darkening up some of those shadows around the bottom of the tree. Putting some more knots in there. Again, just continuing to check my reverse photo and looking where it has places where there's knots or where there's a shading on the tree and putting those in there. Again, going down into the bottom of the tree, darkening up some more of those areas where there's shade and where there's separation in the bark. Going back up to the top and doing the same, just bring, bring, giving more definition to the areas where the, there's separation in the bark on the tree. Trying to bring in some more of that gray color again. Again, deafening up that tree, defining the edges of the branch. Again, going back up to the top, just continuing to go over it. Now I'm blending it all again with my brush and my odorless paint thinner. Blend that in. Again, because you want it to all look smooth and red, like it's all one image, like it's not something that's been drawn on there. Get out some of those pencil strokes. And now here you see I've got some of my touch, my colored pencil touch up and my colored pencil titanium white and I've mixed it together. And I've got my liner brush that I've got in here and I'm just kind of going in there and putting some of the highlights and uh, bringing in some of the details and the highlights in there where we're, we're looking at my reference photo, looking at where it's got some lighting at. Going through the tree trunk, putting in all those uh, places where there's where it sh shows to be like highlights. Basically, these are areas of the tree where the the bird has either gnawed on it or where the the white inside of the tree is showing, also showing highlights where maybe some light is hitting, letting some of that tree show through.
there's some veins putting some def definition in those veins again Getting some more of my color pencil touch up and titanium white going over to the other side and definite finding the edges of that wing there and putting some definition into the tree trunk into the branch again continuing to look at my reference photo and seeing where it needs to go where it needs to be Again, coming in here trying to put in some of those highlights around the, the foot and around the trunk to bring out some of those veins some of those veins in the tree trunk And just going in and adding some more of those high, those details and those highlights showing the separation in the bark in the tree showing where maybe a knot maybe or where the branch is bending Stopping and looking at my reference photo and looking at zoom in on the picture trying to get see where all the details are. Now I'm going up and working on the top of the tree, putting in some of the definition on the top of the tree, some of the highlights around areas where it's sticking out, where there's a knot or a bend in the tree where the bark is showing trying to bring out that bark and just continuing to go over that tree with my touch up my pencil touch up and titanium white bringing in some of those highlights into the top of the tree some of the, highlighting some of those veins so that it and separate the, some of the bark separations so that you can see where the, the bark is and where the inner, inner part of the tree is kind of breaking up some of that moss Continuing to look at my reference photo, getting more of the, the touch-up 
on there. Now I'm going onto the branch at the top and putting the highlights on it, lightening it up, continuing to, to lighten up that branch. highlights to that top branch lightening up the areas that need to be lightened up and bringing some detail in there some definition to kind of break up those colors and make it have more of a textured look to it continuing to work on that top branch and adding texture to it. Now again I'm looking at my reference photo. I'm seeing that in the in the leaves in the background there's like little there's white either white flowers or balls of light where the light is shining through so I'm just going in with my touch up white my touch up and titanium white and kind of adding some like blurry white splotches in there to make it look like there's some blurred flowers in the background or maybe where the light is shining through. I'm doing the same on the other side of the picture now. Just going in and looking at my photo, seeing where they're at, trying to place them where they're at in the same photo, trying to make them look in the, like they're the same. Just continuing to add more of those light blotches or blurred flowers in the background. Just keep going back for more of my touch up and my titanium white continuing to add these little light areas in the background where it looks like light made it, might have been shining through it's kind of a blur. Again, looking at my photo and seeing where, where I need to add more of these light light areas where there's a, a big ball of uh, light coming through. Looking at my reference photo, checking my areas to see where I need to brighten them up. Zooming back out on my picture, my reference photo again, continuing to check that reference picture. I can't stress how important it is and how uh, helpful it is to have that image. Again, going in and putting some of that detail, some, defining some of that bark again with the touch up white in the bottom of the picture. Going in, putting some highlight along the edge of the tree so that it looks like it's more into the background. Doing the same to the bottom branch. Again, continuing to just use my liner brush and going back and getting, picking up some more of that touch up and titanium white on my 
brush and going in and now doing some of the highlights and adding some of the definition to the bottom of the tree. Just continuing to check my reference photo looking to see where I need to add some light to the bottom of the tree. Some more definition. Now here I'm going back in and again I have looked at my reference photo and seen where I needed to add some more of these little light blurs in the background. Adding some more of those little light blurs on the other side. Adding some more of the detailing onto the bottom branch. I'm getting some more of my touch up, my color pencil touch up and titanium white, mixing it together again. Now the, the colored pencil titanium white and colored pencil touch up, it only takes just a little bit of that and with just a couple of drops from the bottle and then mix them together. I did just about all of the background image uh, touch up and the tree touch up and all that with that with just one specimen with one just one little thing of that. It goes a long way. So you don't have to have a whole lot of that. Now here I'm going over the foot, the feet, just kind of going in with my gray, coloring those in, trying to draw lines, give them some texture and some detail with my gray, trying to make it look as much like the reference photo as possible. Then I'm going in with my black and in those claws, bringing in some definition around the feet and the separation of the toe. Blending it with my blending brush and some, you know, going back in and redefining some of those areas once it's been blended. Again, getting that claw in there, redefining it again some more. Getting those claws in there. Now I'm going in with some of my touch up white and putting some highlights on that toe and on that claw, hitting it with some highlights. Highlighting the other claw. Going in and putting some texture onto the toes, letting some of that gray and that that black show through to give it more of a skin feel. Now I'm going in and I'm starting on the bird and I'm starting with the eye. I'm using my black color pencil here to just color in the pupil of the eye. Again, looking at my reference photo, I've got the pictures zoomed in really close on the eye so that I can really see the color of the eye, the shape of the pupil, the shape of the skin, and the feathers around the eye. I'm going to blend that just a little bit. And then I'm going to go back in with my black colored pencil again and put in some 
kind of bring that out, put a couple more layers in there to brighten that up. Looking at my reference photo and seeing that the edges of the the iris are dark, and I'm going to do the darken around there. And I'm just going to do the edge of the eye and kind of go around it until I have it the thickness that I see it in the photo and about the same as the photo. going to keep touching up the edges of that eye until I have it looking the way it, I think it, the way it should look, the way it make sure it looks close to the reference photo. Now I'm going in and putting in some of those wrinkles around the eye and the feathers and the skin of the eye. Adding some of those wrinkles. Adding some of the separation going in with my color, my black colored pencil and getting in some of the detail around the eyes and then the separation in the shadow of the, the feathers, just kind of blocking those in. checking my reference photo and now I'm going up to the beak working on the beak and like with a lot of things with a, when you're drawing an animal a bird or something like this with a dark beak again you don't want to go with just a flat black because that will make it look very flat and unconventional you want to look really look close at the colors that are in that beak and make sure you get a lot of those in there this with the umbrella cockatoo he had a lot of gray and white um, showing through on his beak along with a lot of cracks and chips from where his beak is cracked and chipped from him chewing on things so you just want to get all of those details in there again how putting in the dark areas Defining that beak, the separation in the feathers, drawing in the dark space in between where the beak and the, the bottom of the beak come together. putting in some of those cracks in those lines. Sorry about the camera jumping there. I don't know what happened there. I'm going in and doing some of the feathers around the eyes. Continuing to go in and define those feathers around the eyes and the skin around the eyes. 
bringing in some of those shadows and those shades around the eye under the feathers. Now I'm switching to my gray here for the bottom half of the feathers because they're, you don't want to go real dark on an umbrella cockatoo because then it will make the feathers look real dingy and gray. So you, you don't, and with an umbrella cockatoo, unless their feathers have a lot of coloring in them, which most, they usually have been to have. Okay, and now and right here again, I'm just using my gray colored pencil to go in and kind of block in these feathers some more again and some of the definition and some of the, the shadows underneath the edges and around the edges of the feathers just kind of defining the feathers and the shape of the feathers and again you don't have to be exact with your reference photo no one's going to notice if you don't have feather in an exact spot or if you missed a feather somewhere just as long as you get it really close to the reference photo and that you make sure that you just don't you don't have a lot of big gaps in your in your image that because it's not it won't look natural if you have gaps where there's where where they, it's obvious that there should be feathers so you just want to make sure that you get feathers in there and that they look natural and that that, uh, that there's not any blank spaces or any gaps in your image so just continue to work in that gray pencil blocking in feathers overlapping feathers because Feathers aren't all straight in a row. They overlap and they go underneath each other and they have other feathers on top of them. Birds also have what they call uh, peach fuzz or fuzz. It's just like really fine feathers that are like fluffy that stick out in between those feathers. So there's not always lots of gaps in every with birds. Again, just continuing to fill in those feathers, highlight them and uh, outlining them with a gray pencil, bringing in those shadows. Defining where the feathers are laid out. Continuing to just fill in these feathers. And again, as I said a while ago, you know, if you don't have the feathers laid out in the exact pattern that they are in the reference photo, it's no big deal. Um, no one's going to notice, just as long as it looks like the bird that your, um, your cockatoo has a lot of feathers and like they, that they look like actual natural feathers, that they don't just look like a bunch of lines on, on your picture. Now I'm going over the wing, defining the feathers in the wing. Again, looking at my reference photo here, checking the feathers on the wings, looking to see if I need to add more smaller feathers on here before proceeding to the larger feathers. And as you can see, Looking back at my reference photo, I noticed that there was a couple more rows of these little feathers overlapping the wing. So I went and going in and putting some of those, some more of those little overlapping feathers on top of the wing. And then just going on down into the larger feathers and defining those, putting in the shadows on them. And just continuing to define these shat these these feathers and where they separate and shadows underneath them. Putting some more little feathers in there.
going back in under the edge of the wing and bringing the shadow in more. Looking, can, can again, you, I can't stress how important it is to have that reference photo. When I was looking back at the reference photo, I noticed that the the edge of the, the part of the wing that's closest to the bar, to the body of the cockatoo was shaded. So I'm going in and putting some shading in over the top of the feathers there. And then going in and shading the parts of the body that were darker than the rest of the body here. Putting the shading in in the areas where it's darker. Looking at my reference photo, checking it again, looking at it, looking to see what all I need, what I need to add to the bird, what I need to fix. Now I'm getting my blending brush and some odorless paint thinner, and I'm just going to go in and kind of blend those lines all in and the shadows, make them all look smooth, blend out some of those pencil strokes. Now I've got my black pencil and I'm going in and just darkening up those areas where they're the darkest, where there's lots of shading because there's no light getting to those areas. Again, just darkening up those areas and checking the reference photo to look to see where I need to darken the where I need to darken areas up at going over those areas with my black colored pencil. They're continuing. I needed to add feathers to it. Okay, checking my reference photo and then going back and darkening up some more of the shadows. Making sure that I have shadows where I need shadows at. Again, clicking continually looking at the reference photo and checking it to see where all the shadows need to go. Now I'm going to blend that all in good, make it look nice and smooth, blend in it with my brush and my paint thinner. Getting it all looks nice and smooth. Get out some of those pencil strokes. Again, just trying to make just keep. It's a matter of just blending and layering and blending until you get it looking the way you want it. photo looking at the colors zooming in on areas where I need to zoom in and to, so that I can see the detailing in the eye and the colors and the beak again as I said you don't always want to go with one solid color you want to move you want to look at the photo really closely that you're using to go by and zoom in on it so that you can see all the actual colors that are in 
something because not all flat colors like the beak had a lot of gray and, and white in it from the cracks and chips. Looking at my reference photo and now I'm mixing up going back in with my black and just redefining some of those areas around the beak and the eye some more little feathers and wrinkles around the eye and redefining feathers on the head. And again, I will have links in the description below the video of everything that I used in this video. Again, going over and blending it again, putting some more, darkening up some more areas with that black. Now I'm. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just mixing some of my color pencil touch up with the color pencil titanium white to make some uh, to go in and put some more highlights and things in and, but I saw some things that I needed to improve on so I got my black pencil again and went back in and kind of darkened up some areas where it looked like in the reference photo that needed to be darkened up. checking my reference photo like I'm continually looking at that reference photo to see where I need to put more shadows where I need to go in and add something that I may have missed and now I'm going to take my color pencil titanium white and color pencil touch up Put some of those in my little container that it's just a little plastic cup that I purchased from Walmart. Really cheap, they're over by the plastic plates. Again, right now I'm just basically looking at my reference photo, zooming in and out on it, looking at all the areas where I need to see more details, see if I need to add anything, put uh, 
if I need to go back in and darken something else up. And now I'm getting my colored pencil titanium white. And now I'm going in and putting some highlights on the bird's feathers around the eyes. And I'm just using my touch titanium touch up and titanium white to kind of go in and brighten those feathers up. And I would really recommend that if if you're like me and you're getting back into art again for after not uh, doing it for a while, get some kind of camera, take photos as you're going along or a video camera and record as you're going along. Because I've discovered that by recording it and then watching it back as after I finished the piece, I learned things from watching the video that I take from uh, when I'm doing my pieces, I find where I did things in the pic in the image or in the, the piece that, you know, I really didn't need to do. One of the things that from watching my vi the video while I'm doing the voiceover, I, I'm seeing that you know I kind of went a little overboard on the touch up on the branches and the tree didn't really need quite so much in there you see that's and you learn from watching what you're doing and you learn to you know not do those things in the future Again, I'm sorry for the video. I don't know why it's so jerky. I guess it could be from the editing. There were areas where I was in the view of the camera and was blocking the picture, so I had to edit those areas out and I guess it made the video kind of jumpy but if you would like to see the full video with all of the footage including the areas where you can't quite see exactly everything I'm doing because I was blocking the camera I will have that full video up on my website for you to go and see Again, going in over all these feathers, putting in some highlights on them with my touch-up white. Looking at my reference photo, getting some more titanium white and t colored pencil touch-up. Finishing up these feathers, going in over the body, getting lots of color in on those, brightening those feathers up. Again, I um, didn't quite have quite enough to do all the feathers, so I'm getting some more, mixing up some more of my titanium white with the touch up.
shaking it up, making sure it's mixed good. Now mixing that together, getting it into good white milky consistency. Then once I have it the consistency it should be, I'm going in and just touching up, putting some more highlights on these feathers. <laughs> Using my liner brush to do that to get the fine details on the feathers. Going in around the eyes and brightening those areas up. Going over the feathers some more. Just trying to get these feathers nice and bright. The ones that are supposed to be brighter, more white. Trying to brighten them those up, get them the white to show a little better. photo saw that there were some little feathers going out over the beak. Added those in there. feathers up some of that titanium white. Continuing to go over those with that touch up and the titanium white and just brighten all those feathers up nice and bright. Basically all I'm doing for the rest of this for the rest of the bird. I'm just going in touching up those others.
Okay, and getting back to the picture, I've gone in and I've covered all the feathers with my colored pencil uh, touch-up and colored pencil titanium white. Put a highlighted, you know, kind of brightened up those feathers, kind of redefined them, gave them some more definition by bringing them out some more with that colored pencil touch-up and colored pencil titanium white. Just right now, I'm just kind of looking at my image on my my laptop, zooming in and out of the photo, looking at it, seeing where I need to go back and maybe add some more. Okay, and now right here is where I was looking at the photo in the, uh, in the, in the reference photo, and I realized that I did not draw in the tail below the tree. And so right now I'm just kind of using my black a colored pencil and going in and kind of laying out a sketch for the feathers for the for the bottom of the wing and the tail um, that hang down below the tree branch and I'm just kind of laying in a, a, an outline for those and then and putting in some shading in some areas and some uh, spaces and gaps and some uh, some areas in there but basically just laying it out going in putting the shading in where the shading needs to be and then once I have the shading and the outline of the feathers and the directions that they need to go um, continuing to look at my reference photo and see where which direction these feathers are going in making sure that I'm the, putting them in in the same direction that they're flowing in the bit in the uh, reference photo so that that they look correct that they're not just a bunch of random things drawn on the on the image um, and again just filling in trying to make sure I have the, the shading in and all the right places where it shows in the reference photo and getting those those tail feathers laid into the picture there and then once I have those tail pictures uh, sketched in and the shading in and places where it needs to be then I'm just going in and uh, I took a white uh, color pencil by Karen Dosh Luminous White and kind of went in over those tails to kind of lighten it up and now I'm just going in with my color pencil touch up and my color pencil titanium white and now I'm going to go in and add some white uh, to these tail feathers to make them match the rest of the bird so that they don't look fake. And so I'm just going to go in and I'm mixing up my titanium white with my color pencil touch up and getting ready to uh, start working on these tail feathers to brighten them up and whiten them to make them white and uh, get the detailing in there and br really brighten those up. As you can see here, I'm starting with the little feather that just kind of sticks out, to a, a little tuft of feather that just kind of sticks out there to the right. And then I'm going down into the feather that kind of goes off to an angle and putting the highlights in on that one, kind of bl blending that out with my brush so that it's not too bright. We don't want it to be over bright because it's in the shade, so we're just kind of brightening those up we don't want them to be super white so just kind of blending it out with my brush to kind of thin it out some so that it's not super super bright and super white we want to make sure that we can still see the outlines of our feathers and the, the shading in there and but we just want to get those those feathers put in there Again, going underneath the part that hangs down past the branch, putting those little feathers in there. Again, evening that out, spreading it out so that there's not big, huge portions of the titanium white in one area that makes it uh, brighter than it should be. Because as I said, these are all below, so they're going to be out of the light, mostly. So they're they're not going to be quite as bright as the feathers on the body. I'm just going to 
going back in and kind of touching up some more areas, putting some highlights in for areas where they need to be brightened up. I'm basically just continuing to look back at my reference photo and see where, where what areas need to be brightened up and re, uh, defined even more and then going back and adding more touch up to brighten those areas up and give them definition and define them. So that you can tell where one feather overlaps another. You want to have the separation and be able to tell that these feathers are going in different directions. And so that's one of the things about this is you can really put in a lot of strokes with this, with this highlighting brush or this detailing brush and it makes it really look like feathers because with just the little streaks here and there and then stretch spreading them out and again as you can see with this color pencil titanium white and touch color pencil touch up if I do get areas too bright it's no big deal you can go right in over this with a color pencil and just darken up the areas that are too bright I said just trying to make sure I'm getting a lot of good feathers in here, a lot of definition. Making sure that I'm getting the where it looks like there's a lot of little tufts of feathers sticking out everywhere. Going in here again and touching up the underbelly. going back in with my touch up white on the top part looking at where I might can put some more little tufts of fur or feathers sticking out and touching up those longer feathers on the wing kind of brightening them those bringing those out some more again going back over the top and adding a little bit more on the top to give it a little bit more depth a little bit more uh, feathery look and like I said it's all about with with any kind of art, it's all about layering, just layering over layer over layer until you have the look that you want, the look that it needs to have. Um, it's about uh, colors, darks, lights, you know, your shading, your lighting, where you have your lighting place, where you want your lighting to be, what areas need to be shaded, what areas need to be darker. And with shading, like it is with these birds, because you don't want to go with like a real heavy color. If you're doing something that's like in my my background there, um, and a lot of backgrounds, you would have just gone with a darker green. But whereas where I was trying to make it look even further in the distance, I needed something even darker, so that way I added some black. But again, with birds or any other item like that, when you're trying to work with shading, you don't want to go with the flat black. You want to go with a color close to the color that's um, that's going to be over it. So basically, you want to just go with a darker shade of whatever the original color is. Okay, going back over these tail feathers again, going in and putting some more little tufts of feather in there. Touching up the bird some more, looking where I can add more feathers to make it look more feathery, give it more texture, more of a three-dimensional look, make them look more like feathers and not just lines on a piece of paper. Putting some highlights on certain feathers to make them pop a little more.
The birds are really one of the real good animals to work with when working with certain types of things, especially with colored pencils. Birds, fish, and flowers are all really good to do with colored pencils when you're starting off because there's a lot of really uh, good way, ways to uh, start with uh, shading and doing texturing and layering and things like that. Okay, again here I'm just going, like I said, there was some areas that after I touched it up with the colored pencil titanium white and colored pencil touch up that were just a little uh, too bright, kind of dulled out my areas where shading needed to be. So I'm just going back in with my black colored pencil and darkening those areas back up some more. Continuing to go over those feathers and define them, bringing in the shading as the feathers overlap each other. Now I'm going down into the tail, the tail feathers, and just bringing back in the the lines, defining the uh, where one feather starts and one feather stops. Coloring, you know, bringing in that shading into the tail part where the feathers overlap and where the the shading from the branches covering the feathers. Again, bringing in those lines and hot, um, giving the feathers some separation because with um, you'll see in photos as well as in real life I, when I had mine, their feathers were not always straight. They weren't always all uh, fine and flat together. The even the feathers themselves had gaps in the feather, um, the feather portions, so that where they had feather had come apart, and so there was a gap in the in there. And so that's what I'm just kind of doing now is going in and redefining those feathers, putting some veins in there, uh, and some shading because as this is underneath the the branch, it's going to be darker, so they're going to need to be shaded a lot more so now I'm just kind of blending that out got my brush and I'm blending it and now I'm just kind of blending blend that in so that it shades as you can see there in my other hand I have the remote for my camera didn't mean for that to get into the shot Right there, it felt like there was an area, something underneath the image that was making it raise up in the middle. And I was just checking it. It's just here is my completed first attempt at doing an umbrella cockatoo in colored pencil and using colored pencil touch up and colored pencil titanium white for the feathers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that so you can keep up with my future videos. Also, go ahead and click on the links in the video description for my website and social media page.